Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are reviewing You Love Me by Caroline Kepnes. I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. Uh, right off the bat, I know there are going to be people out there going, I thought you were only going to do horror this month, E. Well, I consider Caroline's work to be horror, so here we are. Also, I didn't want to wait a month, a whole month, because I just got through reading it about a week ago. I didn't want to wait, so, mm. Anyways, um, but uh, here we are talking about the third in the Joel Goldberg series. And for those of you who like to get in, get dirty, and get out, see my opinion, the TL TLDW, too long, didn't watch, crowd. Um, I this, this is my favorite book in the series, and I'm going to try and express what I loved about it so dang much. Um, first off, uh, Jo is back. I had no idea where she was going to go with this book because the, la the way the last one ended, I'm going to stay away from spoilers here, the way the last one ended, I had no idea how Joe was going to get out of that situation. Um, and it is my one and only criticism. It is kind of glossed over and kind of convenient, but looking back at the rest of the series, I can't really be too mad because it fits. Um, everything fits very well with the series, and I can't wait for the, the next one. Um, there are rumors. I believe Carolyn herself told me um, that there are two more books, well, one more book coming now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, back when, uh, I talked to her last, uh, it was, uh, two more books coming, and now this one has been released. She has a brand new publisher, she's with Random House instead of Atria Books, um, another reason why I'm late getting this review, I could, first, I couldn't find time to get it, um, back when I did have time, I couldn't get an ARC, Random House never responded to me, but here we are. Uh, like I said, easily my favorite in the series. Uh, Joe is a... Uh, I think that's too much of a spoiler. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I didn't read the description of the book. But Joe has a new addition to his life that uh, he doesn't really have contact with. And that was a... Uh, I expected more of that in this one, uh, but I didn't get it. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the next book. The main focal point of the next book. Um, now, while it, this it, this person is mentioned quite often uh, throughout the book, it is not the main focal point. This time, Joe's obsessed with a woman named Mary Kay DeMarco, uh, who is the wife of Philip or Phil DeMarco, the lead singer of the on again, off again band Sacrifil. Uh, is he has a radio? Uh, there's a lot of puns with his name. He has a radio, sh uh, a radio show called uh, Fillin' the Blues. Uh, what one thing I, I I want to express here it is once again, Caroline Kepnes uh, has a brand new stable of characters, and they are all so wonderfully fleshed out. And I love the way that she takes every single character. No matter how small, no matter if, you know, big supporting characters, small supporting characters, every single one of them seem to get an arc in these books that are only 400 pages long. It's nuts. I don't know how she does it. It's, it's fantastic to be able to fit in all that contact, content and have everybody be important to the plot. It's just not something you see all the time. Of course, there are authors out there who do it. Stephen King is one of them. Uh, Stephen King is mentioned a lot in this book, so is Haruki Mirakami. I will never, ever hear the name Mirakami again without thinking of this book. She's completely changed my perception of that name. Once you read the book, you'll understand. But this one, ew, um, Joe is trying to behave himself, uh, but he's he gets, of course, he gets in trouble anyways. Um, he meets Mary Kay DeMarco, um, and... There is uh, sexual tension and everything, just like the first two books. Uh, but I think the horror of this one isn't Joe this time around. The horror of this one comes, first off, the ending is utterly devastating. Um, it's definitely a horror novel in that aspect, because I don't believe that horror novels have happy endings. Um, if, not true horror, horror novels. And this one 
just like the last two, they had unhappy endings. I don't think it's a it's a spoiler here that this one is going to have an unhappy ending. It's just the uh, par for the course at this point in time. Um, I also found it interesting as a fan of the t the Netflix show. Also, I think it started on Lifetime, went to Netflix. I could be wrong about that. It might have been Netflix the whole time. But uh, uh, I, I'm interested that in season two of the series, there's a character that is in Hidden Bodies, book two, um, but that character doesn't have a child. Now, in this book, we have a, uh, Mary Kay has a daughter named Nami, uh, who's obsessed with Columbine and Dylan Klebold. Um, very, inner, very, 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 I think Nami is one of my favorite character arcs in the book, other than Oliver, but we'll get to that in a second. I, I, here, here real, real quick, before I forget to mention this, uh, talking about the characters and how fantastically she uh, weaves all these characters together, everybody has a, uh, a very significant role in the story. Um, I, I find that impressive, but the reason why I know that these characters really affected me is because I finished this over a week ago, I have a terrible memory, and I remember every single character. Every single one of them. Um, and that just doesn't happen with me. You can go back and look at my other reviews, and I'll be stumbling all over names and, you know, trying to figure out who was who, uh, saying, you know, sorry if I get this wrong. But in this one, I'm very comfortable saying that I, I, I knew and followed these characters. I knew every single piece of, uh, of information that I possibly needed to know here. Uh, the, the story does, it's, of course, Joe is once again stalking yet another woman, but like I said, he's trying to behave himself this time, and for the most part, he does. Uh, this time around, it's not too much his fault. He, he definitely has blame, and he's still a stalker, uh, still, still a terrible person with horrible thoughts, but he's so much fun to follow. Um, not the type of person that you want to know in real life, but he's definitely the type of person that I love reading about. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this book blows, uh, blows by. I even read this one aloud to my wife. We watched the, uh, the series, uh, the first two seasons. That's all that's out right now. Uh, we watched those together. Uh, Shell had not read the first two books. Uh, as we were going through this one, I got her up to speed so we could go ahead and jump into it. But I read this one to her. I love doing all of the voices, especially Oliver with his constant My Friends. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was really, really fun to read. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in here that, that's, that I found just, just geek-worthy on the side, um, like the mention of the novel The Beloveds and Perfect Days. Uh, both books, both of those books Carolyn had recommended to me, and, all, and they pop up in this one. Uh, I have not read them yet, but I plan on getting to them probably in November or December, sometime about that. I'm super hyped for the, the next season. I have no idea what they're going to do. Because the second season of the show does not end like Hidden Bodies, so I'm not sure how we are going to uh, get this new line or if it's even going to follow You Love Me. I don't know. It might branch away like Game of Thrones did and Dexter and all that stuff. Anywho, back to the book. Um, the, the, what, what I love the most about the writing in this book is something that I hear complaints about. It is Joe's uh, stream of consciousness, run-on sentences. Uh, ands instead of commas, just constant, constant ands, and this, and that, and that, and the, even in the same sentence, the, the beginning thought, the beginning subject will not match the ending subject, and it's just the way Joe thinks, and the reason I, I, I like this so much is because in Providence, which isn't a, gold, a Joe Goldberg book, the writing is similar, but it doesn't have Joe's stream of conscious feel to it. I love it when an author is able to latch on to a character's voice and stick with it so perfectly. Joe's sounded the same in my head from you to Hidden Bodies, now to You Love Me. Uh, I, I do have one complaint that, uh, that Caroline didn't have any control over. Uh, the original title of Hidden Bodies was Love. Um, so you had the series would have been You and Love and You Love Me. Um, I thought I thought that would have been perfect, but um, it, it was changed uh, shortly before publication to Hidden Bodies. It fits, but I think You Love and You Love Me would have been better than You Hidden Bodies and You Love Me. That's just my opinion. Anyways, uh, back to the book again, to the content of the book. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mary Kay uh, works at a library 
um, in a place called Bainbridge. Um, I'm not 100% sure, and I should, probably should have looked this up, if Bainbridge exists. It probably does because I, you know, Carolyn tends to work in places that actually exist. So in, in Bainbridge, which is like a cedar cove or cedar fucking cove, as it's, as it's referred to in the book after a cozy mystery series um, that I believe Joe liked and then got Mary Kay into, or maybe it was the other way around. Um, a, a, a huge highlight in this book, as I expressed earlier, was is Nami. That's Mary Kay's daughter. Nami is is a fantastic character, and her character arc, where she ends up by the end of the book, is my favorite in the book. You also have characters, uh, these little side characters that come into play, like Melanda, who's Mary Kay's best friend, and you have uh, Shortis, or his real name is Seamus. I loved reading both of these characters out loud. They, they all have such a unique personalities, and you will see some of your friends and family and people that you know, maybe people you even hate, in these people. Um, none of them are all good or all bad. They're very dynamic characters. Um, some of them are very close to all evil. Some of them are very close to all good. But everybody has their own quirks and everything. The biggest twist of this book is what ends up happening um, with the Love Quinn storyline, which is kind of a cliffhanger ending from Hidden Bodies. The way that storyline is wrapped up I was I was shell shocked. I don't know how else to put it. I was hollering. I was just screaming at the book. I I couldn't I couldn't believe that uh, that Caroline did it and she did it. So I was very impressed with where it went because I thought I I didn't think it was a nothing burger. I trusted uh, I trusted the author enough to know that uh, it it would all it, it was something something was going to happen. Um, not that I knew what was going to happen, but and I certainly didn't expre expect what did happen in the book. Um, my this is my highest possible recommendation, and I spoke to my wife in depth about this. Y you don't have to have read the first two books. If you want to start with "You Love Me," you absolutely can, and then you can go back and read one and two as as prequels. Uh, this one completely stands on its own. Whereas I don't feel Hidden Bodies had a complete totally complete storyline and I only realized that after reading uh, this one that it it was a rather big cliffhanger um, and throughout this book it does wrap it up it does tie everything together but you the first book was such a uh, uh, not condensed but such a uh, ooh, encapsulated story very tight story uh, with a very uh, serious poignant uh, heartbreaking ending Hidden Bodies, it, it leaves you with a cliffhanger. And then this one, everything is wrapped up. Um, do I know where the next book is going to go? Once again, I have absolutely no idea where Carolyn Kepnes is going to take us, but I am here for the ride. This book is a phenomenon. You just don't see the third book in the series that is as it, that is better than the book two books before it. I am astounded. I am in awe. And well done. Carolyn. Uh, but have you read You Love Me or have you read You? Have you read Hidden Bodies? Let me know what you thought of any of these books down there in the doobly-doo. Let me know if you loved them, hated them, felt meh about them. But give me details on why you felt the way you did so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!